Hey, what's going on guys? Steve from Minimasters here, and today I'm going to show you how to improve the sound in your ride. So, you guessed it, I'm going to show you how to install speakers in your car or truck. It's really, really simple. I mean, honestly, the places that do like sound and audio, they do have a few technical things they know how to do, and they have experience, and they have all these extra things to do, but really it's it's almost as simple as just plug in and play. So uh, today I have some Infinity speakers. This is like a six and a half, which uh, based on how I measured my old ones in the door, this should fit. Now there's a couple of reasons you'd like to do this. Uh, I already have an aftermarket head unit in there, which is usually leaps and bounds over the existing uh, OE head unit. And uh, if you want to get more sound quality, you got to upgrade your speakers. Now the Ford of this year has pretty decent speakers, but there's no definitive like make, like we have a Suburban and that Bose actually endorsed that car and put Bose speakers and obviously you don't want to change those out because they're awesome. But in this case, they're just regular factory speakers and I can tell the, uh, the bass doesn't really reach that high and the high frequencies aren't all there. So I want to upgrade it with a two-way speaker. Um, you can do the research on why you want to buy a two-way, three-way, and so on and so forth. Um, from what I gather, best compromises available are with the two-way, because once you go to a three-way, now you're you're just uh, you know it's like a Swiss Army knife. You know it's not it's not really really good as a knife because it gets so many things going. So uh, a two-way basically means you have your mid-range and, and lows with the big part, and with your high frequency that little part in the center. Uh, a three-way will have like another speaker in there. Obviously, if you see a concert speaker, a concert speaker has every single one of these separate in each individual box. Obviously, we don't have room for that on any of our vehicles, so compromise. So, let's get started. started. On my 95 F-150, like most cars, you're going to have to remove this whole door panel because the speaker we want to change is right behind the speaker grill. Um, you could get lucky. Uh, your car could have direct access to the speaker without having to pull the whole door trim off. Well, kudos to you for buying such a car. Uh, but this isn't the case with my truck. So uh, basically what you're going to do is take anything off that holds this door on. So behind my roll windows, there's going to be a uh, screw in there. You get your different screws and uh, fasteners here and here. The previous owner also was not much of OE fastener, so we decided to use screws to screw on the door panel. Uh, which I've removed most of those and gone to the old snaps. Um, something you should know about pulling door panels off is typically they aren't all screwed on. They're actually snap fastened in. And basically uh, on the back of the door panel, there's just little snaps that you push in and they expand and hold on the door panel. Now the way to get those off without breaking your tear because they are plastic is use a tool that looks like this. And basically you're going to slip it underneath that's faster and you're gonna pull up and it's gonna uniformly pull out the snap and not tear it. So you wanna get yourself a set of these tools. Uh, I think this is a sear set, it cost me like 12 bucks and it's actually like two other tools that came with it. So uh, I'm gonna pull my door panel off and move on from there. So I'm gonna give you a quick look at how this tool works. So this is one of these fasteners I was talking about. So basically you get it out, you just slip it underneath and you pull and it comes right out. Otherwise, you'll be struggling to get one of these out and then uh, put it right back in your door panel. So one problem you may encounter while doing speakers is the screw placement. So this one has four uniform screws in a cross or X pattern, depending on which way you look at it. And this one, well, we don't know quite exactly what they were thinking at the Ford factory. As you can see, look there, it is a Ford like built speaker. So how do we make this work? Well, you could just drill some new holes in the door and you can mount it like that that is totally an option uh, if you don't feel like doing that uh, infinity provides these speaker mounts which give you multiple options for mounting I mean they've got everything on here uh, and obviously too by putting that down you'll need more speaker insulation so one thing you ought to know about speakers if I was to mount it directly on the door it'd be right up against metal and every time it booms you go you, you just get a rattling you don't want that so one of the things they provide you with is thin piece of foam now normally this would go behind the speaker 
and mount directly to the door. But in this case, we have these. So the order in which how these work is you put that main foam behind the plastic insert, and then they provide this little swirl of insulation that you can stick to the outside of this, then your speaker goes on that way, your speaker is completely insulated. Now, I'm feeling like I may just drill holes into that to avoid having to use this. So I'm probably gonna go and do that. Okay, so I've drilled my new holes for the Infinity speaker, and I put the piece of foam underneath. So, should be ready to plug up and play, right? Not exactly. So the Ford speaker has its own proprietary plug. So this won't fit up to my speaker. So we need to go into my handy dandy electrical box and get two spade adapters, the female adapters, and uh, solder them onto the hookup. Now, a cool thing you could do if you wanted to keep this like really OE and pretty slick, is you could take that, the connector from the old speaker, that, and solder that onto the new speaker. That way you could in fact plug it up and keep all the old connections. That would be really cool. That may be something I might actually consider now that I think about it. So uh, I'm gonna go check my electrical tools and if I don't have any spades, we might actually do that. So you guessed it. I opted not to go for the spade connectors and I took the connector from here and soldered it on. So basically what I did is the arms from the old thing came off straight and I just pinched them in so they would line up and then I dumped a ton of solder on them to hold them on there and there. But now it's got a nice strong OE hookup so I don't have to mess with that connector. Also, one reason I did uh, opt not to use the spade connectors is, see that one spade, how wide it is? The one on the other side isn't that wide, and it would shake. And you know, when I, last time I did any soldering project with you to do that KC light, I said anything that vibrates or shakes, it's going to come apart. So the last thing I need is to be bounced around and lose my tunes, because bounced around with no tunes... You know, when you're out having a, a blast somewhere, that's that's not cool. So that's going to stay. So I'm going to hook it up and we'll get going. And there she is, folks, all mounted in. Now, one thing I did do uh, different as well is I swapped out the factory Torx head screws with these Phillips head self-tapping screws. Number one, Phillips head, much easier. And you can find any drill bit to work Phillips. Uh, second, the head on the other ones was too large and it wouldn't fit in between the gap of this little metal ring that goes all around the outside. So instead of grinding down the screws and or grinding down the outer edges of this, I decided to swap the screws so we don't ghetto up the whole job. Uh, that way it looks really good. So uh, that's it for me, guys. I'm going to go install the other speaker on the other side so I have balance Across my speakers when I'm out driving so my tunes sound awesome so uh, in the meantime this is Steve from the Minimasters thanks for watching